Welcome to part 2 of the Circle Tangent Visuals in Unity Tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've calculated the tangent of the outer circle by an angle. In this part we will write out the equation to find a circle that is tangent to two other circles. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Andrew LeBoy, Devin the Dude, Frere Thibaut, Derek Vechter, Esperdine and Funky Deluxe. In the previous part we've calculated the tangent of the outer circle by an angle. Now we will add an inner circle to the equation which has its own center point and radius. The center of the outer circle will be point A, the inner circle point B and the tangent point on the outer circle point C. We will start by calculating the distance between each of the points resulting in a triangle. Now our goal is to find the radius of a new circle along the line of AC so that it hits the tangent of both the inner and outer circle. To do this we first need the angle cosinus of C over AB. In mathematical equations theta is often used to refer to an angle. To calculate the angle we add the square of AC to the square of AB and subtract the square of BC from that. Then we divide this by 2 times the length of AC times the length of AB. This leaves us with about 20 divided by 42 which results in 0.48. Now using this equation the result will always be between minus 1 and 1 which we've seen before in the previous part using sinus and cosinus. To get the radius of the circle that is tangent to both circles we use this equation. A is the radius of the outer circle of which we get the square. We add to that the square radius of the inner circle. Now D stands for the distance between point A and B and add the square of that as well. Then we subtract from that 2 times the radius of the outer circle multiplied by the distance between the two circles multiplied by theta, the angle of C over AB. We divide this by 2 times the radius of both circles added together minus the distance between them multiplied by theta. In this case this results in 25.7 divided by 11.6 which gives 2.21 as output radius. Now that we have the radius of the tangent circle, finding the position is easy. We simply use the same degree we used for calculating point C, but instead of using the radius of the outer circle, we subtract the radius from the tangent circle from that, resulting in the correct position of the tangent circle. Once we have implemented this equation, we are able to find the tangent circle in all directions. At this point, the circle will take the closest tangent of the inner circle, but we can also change this, to respect the tangent on the other side of the inner circle, by changing a plus b in the equation to a minus b. Now the tangent circle is still tangent to both circles, but takes different tangent into account. Let's now implement this equation into Unity by writing it out in C sharp. Continuing where we left off in the previous part, let's open up this circle tangent script. In the previous part we've created the vector 3 get rotated tangent and we've used a float called scale but I want to change this into radius because that makes a little bit more sense than scale. So let's change this to radius and radius. Doesn't really change anything but it's more logic this way. So we're now going to add to this class a function to find the tangent circle. So let's create a protected vector 4 because the vector 4 includes the position of the circle and the radius and we're going to call this the find tangent circle and as an input we're going to get a vector 4 and we'll call this circle A which is the outer circle we're also going to get a vector 4 which is called B for the inner circle and we need to input a float and we'll call this degree and we'll use this degree to talk to the get rotated tangent function so the first thing we'll do is we'll find the tangent point on the outside of the outer circle. So let's create a vector 3 and we'll call this the tangent point. And that is going to be the get rotated tangent function. And in here we're going to get the degree and the radius is going to be a dot w. Actually it makes more sense to call this c as this is going to be point c. And now we need to get the distances between point A, B and C. So let's start with point A to B. So we'll write a float and we'll call this AB. And we'll get this using vector3.distance. And with this function we can get a distance between two different vector3s. So 
let's start with a new uh, vector 3 of a dot x a dot y and a dot z now we're going to another new vector 3 and that is going to be b dot x b dot y and b dot z now let's copy paste this line two times so copy paste paste and we're going to change this one from a to c and this one is going to be b to c so we need to change this one into c which is a factor three so we can just say c and bc is going to words c and it's starting from b so b dot y and b dot z now in our equation we are going to use these distances to multiply a value that will be used to divide something else we need to make sure that these values are greater than zero because dividing by zero will give a none error which means not a number error ac and bc will never be zero but ab is the distance between the outer and the inner circle so if the inner circle is at the center of the outer circle this will result in zero to fix this, we will use the mathf.max to make sure that the output has a minimum value above zero. So let's put that statement around AB. So we're going to say mathf.max and we're going to get this value and the lowest output value will be 0.1f. Now with this in place, we can calculate the angle C over AB. So let's write a float and we'll call this angle CAB which is the square of AC, so AC times AC, and we'll put parentheses around these, plus the square of AB, minus the square of BC. Let's put parentheses around all of these statements, and we'll divide this by two times the length of AC, multiplied by the length of AB. Now with these variables, we can create the equation to get the radius of the tangent circle. So let's write float and we'll call this R for radius. And that is going to be the square of the radius of the outer circle. So A dot W multiplied by A dot W minus the square of the radius of the inner circle. So B dot W multiplied by B dot W plus the square of the distance between the outer and the inner circles. So AB multiplied by AB. Now let's put parentheses around all of these statements. And we're going to subtract from that two times the radius of the outer circle multiplied by the distance between the outer and the inner circle multiplied by the angle CAB. Now let's place this entire line between another parentheses. And the outcome of this part of the equation, we need to divide by something else. So I'm going to continue on a new line so we can read it better. So we'll divide this by two times the radius of the outer circle plus the radius of the inner circle minus the distance between the outer and the inner circle multiplied by the angle CAB. And now let's close that off with a semicolon. And now that we have the radius of our tangent circle, we can get the position by using the get rotated tangent again. So we're going to say that C is get rotated tangent. And we'll use the same degree. And we'll get the A dot W, which is the radius of the outer circle. And we're going to subtract from that R. And now we have everything that we need, so we need to return it as a new vector 4. So let's say return a, a new vector 4. And for its position, it's going to be c dot x, c dot y, and z dot z. And for its radius, it's going to be r. Now let's save this script and go to the tangent circles to implement this function into our script. Now what we're going to do is spawn multiple tangent circles at different degrees, 360 degrees around. We use this tangent circle game object to spawn the tangent circle and we don't need that anymore. We're going to remove this line from the start and these two bottom lines from the update as well. 
and we don't need the degree and the tangent circle radius. Now we're going to spawn multiple tangent circles, so let's create a private vector for to store all of the positions and radiuses of the tangent circles. And we'll call this tangent circle. And this is going to be an array. Now let's also create a private game object array in which we'll store the tangent circles as an object. So we'll call this tangent object. And we'll create an integer which will be public to set the amount of circles. So we'll call this circle amount to spawn. Now let's create a range attribute for this. So we'll say range between 1 and 64 circles. Now let's set the size of the tangent circle array and the tangent object array in the start. So we're going to say the tangent circle is a new vector 4 by the size of the circle amount. And the tangent object is a new game object by the size of the circle amount. Now we also need to spawn all the objects, so let's create a for loop. So for int i is 0, i is less than the circle amount, i++. plus plus. And we're going to instantiate a new game object, so let's say game object. And we'll call this the tangent instance. Is going to be casted to a new game object, instantiate. And we want to instantiate a circle prefab. Now let's fill the array of tangent object with the tangent instance. So we're going to get its position in the loop. And that is going to be the tangent instance. And we'll also make all of the objects a child of this object. So we're going to talk to the tangent object of its position in the loop. Dot its transform dot parent is going to be this dot transform. Now let's scroll down to the update. And in the update, we're going to do another for loop for int i is 0, i is less than the circle amount i plus plus. And now we want to find the tangent for each of the circles. So we're going to talk to the tangent circle array, which is the factor 4 array. And we're going to get here the find tangent circle that we just created. And its A is going to be the outer circle. The B is going to be the inner circle. And now for each circle in the loop, we want to shift the degree by a certain degrees. So what we'll do is we'll say that 360 degrees divided by the circle amount multiplied by i. So if we have 20 circles, 360 divided by 20 is 18 degrees. So each circle will be with a degree 18 more than its previous one. Now the only thing we need to do is apply the position and the radius of tangent circle to the tangent object. So let's type tangent object of its position in the loop. Though its transform dot position is going to be a new vector 3. And that will be the tangent circle of its position in the loop dot its x, the tangent circle of its position in the loop dot y, and the tangent circle of its position in the loop dot z. Now let's copy this line, paste it, and we're going to change the position to the local scale. And instead of using x, y, and z, we're going to use its w value. So w, w, w. And we'll multiply this by 2. Now that that's all done, let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity, let's go to the tangent circles. And we need to set the circle amount. So let's set the circle amount to 32. And when we play the scene we see all of the circles tangent to all of the both circles. So if I change the inner circle to a different position, you will see that all the circles are updated to take their tangent positions. In the next part of the tutorial, we will bind the position of the inner circle to the position of a thumbstick on a controller and bind buttons to grow and shrink the circle size. 
But for now I want to thank you for following this tutorial part. To stay updated to new released parts, subscribe to this channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding!